Hi, welcome to this short video on Azure API management and this time we're going to focus on cores. Cores is cross-origin resource sharing. It's how you enable a browser client to call um, a service that lives in a different domain. So if your service or the API lives at foo.com, but your web page is at bar.com, then you have to do something to enable that web page to use JavaScript to call that API, which is a pretty common scenario. You have to enable cores, cross-origin resource sharing. Now that's not necessarily a trivial thing to do. There's a bunch of lifting involved. And one of the cool things about Azure API management is it can add cores to an existing service inside the proxy. So if you've seen any of our other presentations, you'll be aware that we have this proxy layer inside Azure API management that sits in between people's apps, you know, the website in question here or the app on the mobile phone and the actual API. And that's where we can apply some magic. And that magic comes in the form of policies. So to show you that, I want to give you a quick demo. What we have here is a very simple HTML page with a bit of JavaScript in it. And this JavaScript has already been baked to call our calculator API. So again, if you've seen any of our other demos, you've probably seen the calculator API. It's a very simple API that we host in Azure that allows you to sum numbers, you know, to, to add uh, an A number and a B number and get the result. And it's a cool API for doing little experiments. Now, what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to run this page in my local host, so running it from my local machine, and then try and call that service in Azure. And we're going to see this cross origin problem. So here I am um, browsing to localhost. I'm going to just refresh this page. This is my little page here. It's an awesome website that allows me to add numbers using an API. You know, it's somewhat of a contrived example, but it's it's perfect for the purposes of demonstration. So if I try and add some numbers here, I'm going to say four and uh, five and hit equals, that's going to invoke the API, but nothing happens. We get a little error. And the reason for that is, is because it couldn't invoke the API. And if we have a look at our little dev tools here, and I'm using um, Google Chrome in this case, you'll see the console is showing a message saying, XML HTTP request cannot load the requested URL. No access control allow origin header is present. And that's because um, the service is checking, sorry, the browser is checking to see whether that API supports cross origin calls. Now we can add cross origin support to an API using Azure API management in a matter of minutes. It's just a question of configuring a policy. So here I am in the Azure portal. I'm going to jump into the publisher portal where I go and get to fine tune my API management instance. And I'm going to go into policies. Policies are where we can apply the magic of the API management proxy and change the behavior. In this case, I'm going to apply the cause policy at the calc API scope. So inbound here, I'm just going to add, drop in the cores policy and notice how I get to specify which domains I support. So I can say I support calls from any domain, which I'll probably do for, for now for the purposes of demonstration. Or I could be very specific about which domains I allow to call my service. So let's just clean up this extra stuff here, this instructional stuff. Hit save. And those instructions are now being sent out to the API proxies. So all we have to do is change our website now that instead of going to the service directly, goes to the API management proxy. And you may have noticed I have this already here and commented out in my service. So I'm just going to replace that. So here's my um, API management proxy instance. You can see it's the same API as above, but now it's a managed version. And I also need to provide my subscription key, which identifies me as a developer or as a partner to the API management service. So let's save that and go and browse in my, um, uh, uh, sorry, go and browse to the web page over here in Chrome again. Hit refresh and then let's put some numbers in. So we'll go for 10 and 4 this time. And now we get a result. And if we look at the network trace, you'll see that time we were successfully making a cross origin resource sharing call. Now, if I was to make any other kind of HTTP request from my web page, anything beyond a simple get or a simple post with common headers like accept, then the stakes are raised slightly in the cores game. And that means that the, that's because the W3C specification makes certain allowances for a simple get and post request. It makes it easier to implement cross origin resource sharing. 
However, the minute we get above that, the minute we want to do a custom method or a method like patch or put that isn't get or post, or even just use uh, custom headers, then things get more complicated on the server side. Now the good news is API management still makes that incredibly easy, but because we're secure by default, you have to be explicit in terms of which headers and which methods you want to support once you uh, raise the game above the basics. So you can see here, I've changed my JavaScript just slightly to include a custom header. And the header is um, foobar equals bar foo. So, you know, nothing uh, meaningful in this case, but it could be to my service, who knows. And that's gonna prevent cores from working. So let me just save this. Switch back to the browser. Now let's just refresh the page. And now we're gonna try and invoke that service again. And as you can see, we get an error. And down here in the console, we can see we're back to having a problem with cores. And that's because we're not allowing this custom header at the API management layer. Let me show you how easy that is to fix. So when we go to this elevated cause um, that requires what we call a pre-flight request, we need to be very explicit about everything. So we need to add two more sections, allowed methods and allowed headers. It's pretty intuitive, you know, allowed methods, I put a method in for get, that's the only thing I need, so that's the only thing you should configure, secure by default. And allowed headers, I need accept and foobar, because foobar's my custom header. So if I hit save now, those will get pushed out to my live proxies on Azure. And then switch back to the browser over here. I'm just gonna refresh the page and we'll put some new numbers in here. And this time we get a result. And that's because we're now, we now have a working pre-flight request. So very, very easy to configure calls with Azure API management. Hopefully you're enjoying this series of videos and they're helping. If you have any suggestions for other videos you'd like to see, feel free to reach out to either me or the team at Azure API MGMT on Twitter or API MGMT at Microsoft.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you.